and your impressions so far? Well, I mean, slightly disappointing in that respect. Hi, I'm Justine, the nerdy half of the Breakaway Bravehearts. And today, Daryl and I are in Falmouth, Cornwall, trying out something new for us. City Break UK walking tours. We've never tried a self-directed app-style tour before, so we were really looking forward to exploring this picturesque town in a unique way. But if you haven't guessed it already from the title of this video, this experience didn't exactly live up to expectations. So we didn't even make the 500 points. This video will follow our usual format, the first half being a walkthrough of our experience on the day, the second half being our in-depth social tourism review using our BB stars. If you want to know more about the criteria of each star, check out the Social Tourism Guides video link that has just popped up on your screen. And of course, click subscribe so you get more of our reviews. But for now, stick with me to the end of this video so you can see why our scavenger hunt in Falmouth hasn't made it on our list of recommendations. First things first, let's talk about the app. To start with, there are a few different names to get used to. The website is City Break UK. The company is Clucation. The tour is called a Hidden Gems Self-Guided Tour and Treasure Hunt. And then the actual app is called LowQuiz. We chose the Cornwall game and paid our £25 for seven day access. The app download was easy enough and we read the frequently asked questions in advance, so we knew it would use up a lot of battery power, and we loaded it on both of our phones. Our research also told us that Cornwall enjoys around 1,540 hours of sunshine each year, making it one of the sunniest regions in the UK. Sadly, the 24 hours we had in Falmouth won't be counted in that cherry statistic, as our early August day was grey and misly as the locals would say. But we can't blame the app for that, so we just wrapped up warm and set off for our first stop. We took the bus into The Moor, which gave us easy access to Falmouth Centre and Seafront. It also happened to be the first destination on the treasure hunt, so one destination on the list ticked off already. Well, we've just arrived at The Moor, and that was one of them. So this so, is The Moor? This is known as The Moor, yeah. The app didn't tell us anything about this area, but I looked it up later. It is called the Moor because it is reclaimed marshland. It is essentially just a roundabout, so we weren't entirely sure what treasure was to be found here. The app simply shows you that you've gained five points as soon as you're in the area, and that's pretty much it. But there was another destination close by that sounded exciting, so we clicked on that to find the route, which takes you to a kind of Google Maps style location map. We have just to our right, when we go here, we have Jacob's Ladder. So the roundabout is here. We have to go here. So down there. OK? Yeah. Very simple to use. Where is Jacob's Ladder? They told me Jacob's Ladder. Must be here. OK, simple for most people to use. OK, there we go. So now we know oh. from a... From a from an ability or accessibility point of view, as you can see, there is very little chance of getting up here unless you are fully mobile. But it is called a ladder, so one does have to expect to uh, climb. City Break UK do say on their website that while at least 70% of their challenges are accessible to all, some destinations are unsuitable for wheelchairs or mobility scooters. We just happened to stumble on the first one straight away. It definitely was a climb, but I was excited, expecting to see quite a view of the city from the top. OK, interestingly, I think this is as far as you have to go. Um, There's more up there. Yeah. 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 However, we've already got it. So what happens? You just get a point or something? Five points. Does it give you any information? Uh, no. So it doesn't tell you... Oh, I'm puffed. Doesn't tell you what it's about, why it's called Jacob's Ladder or anything like that? Not that I can see. It's not very exciting. <laughs> you can see over the rooftops. 
Yeah. So we got our five points, but we really weren't sure what we were looking at, and we seemed to be standing very close to people's houses. We decided to keep going. Maybe there was more to see up the top, or maybe a plaque with information. Let's continue up on the, on the ladder and just see. But as you can see, look, we're coming back here, yeah. which is this here. Okay, well, there we go. We're at the top of Jacob's Ladder. That's it. So this first stop gave us a double disappointment. Firstly, there was nothing here to see. And secondly, there was no information provided. I had hoped that something called a hidden gems and treasure hunt would require some kind of searching for clues or activity to take part in, or at least some information about each destination. Nothing. We made it to the top of Jacob's Ladder and, um, impressed. Well, I mean, we are just following something here, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll see what the next one brings. We'll remain positive. Yeah. To be fair, when I looked up Jacob's Ladder on Google, there wasn't much to learn. Basically, there are 111 steps, and it was built by a businessman who wanted to link up his businesses and his houses. OK, so much for stop number one. But there were plenty of more destinations on the app. Next up is the Falmouth Art Gallery, which was just across the street back in the moor. So that's on here as well, gains us five points. Okay, so it does say a little bit of information. Mm -hmm. It says the Falmouth Art Gallery, the award-winning Falmouth Art Gallery is family friendly and free. The gallery has a vibrant and ambitious exhibitions program. It usually stages thematic shows featuring selected works from the gallery's collection hung alongside loans from artists, museum collections, and private lenders. This means that the three exhibition rooms are constantly changing and there is always something new and exciting to enjoy. So that's what was written about it. I have a feeling when I press on here, it might access, yeah, as soon as you press on to where you are, it brings up the actual website and everything as well. So that's pretty cool from, from the app point of view. So yeah. Let's go and take a look. The gallery is on the small side, but is free to enter and does have a good selection of local artists. On the day we visited, there was an exhibition called Ameth, which is the Cornish word for farming. A range of different types of artists had given their take on Cornwall's rich farming heritage, while also touching on environmental concerns. I was particularly tickled by Georgia Glendale's humorous piece, The Worm Forgives the Plough. This is a musical composition by Seamus Carey, apparently based on the emotions and BMI of some wriggly earthworms. The description certainly made me smile. So we did enjoy our quick stop at the art gallery, and it could possibly be called a hidden gem, but in terms of the app, I have to say that there was nothing that City Breaks UK had added to our day that we wouldn't have got from a quick things to do in Falmouth search on Google. But the day was young and there were a few more hidden gems to find. Falmouth is a port. In fact, its harbour is the third deepest natural harbour in the world. It's been the starting or finishing point of many important sailing achievements and is even home to a sea monster, Morgwar sea giant. There have been many documented sightings over the years of the long-necked sea serpent, similar in appearance to the famous Nessie of Loch Ness. But legend says the Morgor favours hot summers, so this wasn't a day for us to go monster hunting. Just as well, because our City Breaks UK app told us nothing of this interesting legend of the port, nor about the port itself. We stumbled across an artistic dedication to the city's servicemen, but this hadn't made it into the app either. Okay, it came through, and it was just like one of the 20 things out of the 65 things you can do in Falmouth. This is a completely different thing. There's nothing to do with this at all. It's come up with Flushing Ferry, which is where we are now, so it's not even about this memorial? Nope. It's just a wharf? A wharf with a boat, yeah. yeah. There you go, Flushing Ferry. That's what it is, the Flushing Ferry. It was a fairly nice wharf, I guess. I've seen better, I've seen worse. The harbour view was lovely and I'm guessing on a sunny day it would be a great place to stop and watch the world float by 
as you tried some Cornish ice cream. It's made from Cornish clotted cream from Cornish cows on Cornish farms. And this is my delicious way of introducing you to the Cornish language. Cornish Canuic is part of the Celtic language family. The language was almost lost completely, with many claiming that the last native speaker was Dolly Pentreath, who died in 1777. But there has been a revival over the past couple of decades, and now it can be proudly seen in shop windows, used in local news and television, and even taught in daycare centres and schools. I love this. A language is so important to a culture and a community. So I'm going to keep popping Cornish words on screen for you, even though I have absolutely no hope of pronouncing them correctly. I'm also going to keep giving you info about Cornwall. Again, no thanks to the app. By this stage, we were hungry, so we had a choice to make. The obvious lunch would of course be the Cornish pasty, but having been advised by a local that the best Cornish pasty can be found in Praise Umbebel, we had already sampled them. Fun fact about this crimped edge, traditionally it was never intended to be eaten. Pasties were a standard meal for a tin miner who often had arsenic on their hands, so the crimped edge served as a handle that was then thrown away. But today, because we're on the seaside, we opted for Falmouth fish and chips. Mushy peas? No. I know the answer to that. The restaurant we ordered from was obviously popular and had quite a queue. They offered vegan options as well and gave full information about the ingredients. It was well worth the wait. Apparently award winning. Can we give it a try? Mm. That fish is really good. Got to be done. Mm -hmm. And I'd have to say on par with kiwi fish and chips. Our lunch break was on the waterfront right next to the next stop on our treasure hunt, the Maritime Museum. Being an important port, Falmouth has plenty to share regarding maritime history. Cornwall has over 300 recorded shipwrecks off its coast. The museum even has a display of treasures recovered from some of these wrecks. However, we chose not to enter the museum, having spent our day's budget on the app and the fish and chips. The app does let you know in advance that entry prices are not included, of course, but I feel like it's another missed opportunity. If there was an incentive, such as a discount code or a voucher, we might might have been more inclined to enter. Again, this is one stop that would have come up on a quick what to do in Falmouth Google search. So having paid £25 for the app to tell us to go to a fee paying museum was a little disappointing. But there were still three more stops on the treasure hunt so we kept on moving. Okay, where to next? We're going that way towards a monument as far as I can see. It's called the Killigrew Monument. Killigrew? Kiligru or Kiligru? You don't know, do you? I don't know. And the problem is, because this thing doesn't have any sound or voice activation, you don't know. Yeah, how to pronounce each thing. So this this will be the monument, I'm guessing. Oh gosh, someone's decided to tend. So Kiligru Monument, let's find out. It just says it's number 30 on the list of number 65 things to do here in Falmouth. What does it say? Not a great deal. And we just continue from there. Maybe there's some information on the other side. Let's go and have a look. So once more, no info from the app, and it stopped us at the side of the monument without the plaque, meaning we would have missed what turned out to be my favorite story of the day. <laughs> this is hilarious. He never stated specifically the purpose of it. Basically, he built this thing and nobody knows why. Oh look, position he engaged in piracy and spent some time in Fleet Prison in London with his son John for looting a Spanish ship. Maybe he wanted to hide oh something. Oh my god, there is Maybe. definitely treasure under this. This could be the ultimate prize. <laughs> Dig under the Killigrew for some treasure. He doesn't mean that folks, please do not try this at home. So after reading this plaque, it seems like this monument here behind me is dedicated, uh, well actually nobody knows why or why he built it, but they think it's dedicated to his family, including his wife was a pirate and she murdered some people. So he built a pyramid. 
personally, we think there's treasure underneath. I think there's treasure underneath. I mean to say, a mystery monument dedicated to a murderous female pirate. What could be better? Another missed opportunity here for sure. But three more stops on our app. We didn't really plan well and ended up zigzagging across town through the crowds. But the next two stops took us to the quieter end of Falmouth. Our destination was Packet Quay, where we found a small park with a lovely view. Well, it's a lovely spot. Um, again, to just sit, enjoy the view, have what Falmouth has to offer, which if you just look out there, it's beautiful. Lovely, beautiful Cornish port. As we sat and looked across the bay, we reflected on our purchase of City Breaks UK Falmouth Hidden Gems Treasure Hunt slash Scavenger Hunt. And your impressions so far? Well, I mean, you're going to these places. I guess it's, it's helping you get to certain places, but those places that when you get there, there's not a great deal to learn from them. So slightly disappointing in that respect. There are some that are, seem to be a little bit out of reach, unless you're going on a boat road, uh, ride or something like that, I'm guessing, because there's the out to water. Well, where we're going now, the direction, there's very little now being offered up. But we had saved the best for last and had one more big destination on our treasure hunt. There were buses we could have taken, but we actually enjoy walking because we get to see different parts of a city. So we didn't mind trekking across town again. We got to see the other side of the port and a bit of greenery. I think we have to go down. Really? That says public footpath there, so I guess we go there. But you're not going to look at the map, you're pretty confident. Uh, <laughs> yes. We're now in the middle of a field, but Daryl swears we're going the right we're way. We're on a public footpath. Let's find out where we are. Africa, apparently. <laughs> No, we didn't walk to Africa. It was the fabulous Pendennis Castle, built by Henry VIII. This is another great English heritage site that we had been looking forward to visiting. As luck would have it, that afternoon we discovered that they were setting up for one of their annual medieval festival events. We decided that simply couldn't be missed. So we booked ourselves tickets for the next day and managed to meet and interview one of the performers, Rob Sim, who was celebrating 40 years of fire breathing and entertaining. <laughs> We've dedicated a whole video to the castle, Rob's performance and interview. So make sure you subscribe now and hit the notifications bell to get the alert when that video goes live. So that was it. Our day trialling a self-directed tour using City Breaks UK. We made 500 points? Sadly not. No, we didn't oh. make 500 points. We've just made five more points on our 460 points. So we don't pass go and collect 10 quid. No, we don't. Sadly not. We get as far as Pendennis Point and then there's no other point. Pendennis Point, what does it have to say? This is one of the 14th of the 65 things to do in Palm. You can probably guess our final verdict, but first let's go through the social tourism criteria to see how it stacks up social good. The app had plenty of opportunity to provide us with learning and understanding of Falmouth's history and culture through its quiz feature. While we were near the waterfront, a bonus popped up on the app, giving us triple points on Cornwall quiz questions. Points tripled. Oh, we've got points tripling for the next 30 minutes. So what is that all about? Daryl enjoys the challenge of games like this, so we headed down to the seaside to learn more about Cornwall. Or so we thought. Which very famous kids film was filmed at the Headland Hotel in Newquay? Famous kids film. What is the collective name for the upright granite stones protruding from the ground in Bodmin Moor? Actually, the questions were a little frustrating because if you didn't know the answer already, then you had no chance of getting it right. They weren't related to the places we had been to and we had to skip several or Google them. Finally, we found a few that we knew. 
Okay, in the 1900s, half of the world's what came from Cornwall? Tin. tin. That's got to be tin, right? Yes, we got another 60 points. Whoa! We've got a question of the iconic Tate Gallery is in which Cornish town? Oh, St. Ives? Yes, well done. Okay, here's one for you. What is the most southerly point on the Cornish mainland? Is that lizard? Yes. It's wrong! What? The correct answer was lizard's point, not the lizard okay. point. Honestly, I didn't find the quiz added a lot to my knowledge of Cornwall. This could have been a chance to teach some Cornish language, connect with Cornish culture, and encourage interaction with staff or volunteers at locations. Instead, it was more like a random list of fun facts, with no real sense of connection to where we were in actual time and space. The next point on this star is about creating connections between travellers and locals. The website does make it clear in advance that this app is not really designed for that. So of course we weren't expecting much human interaction. But Daryl is a chatty bloke who likes people. So he used the quiz as an opportunity to meet the locals. One question we were stuck on was about Are the you guys Cornish, Cornish slang word, oggy. No. So we asked Have you around. Heard the word oggy and what it might mean? Oggy? Yeah. She's been called an oggy a bit by something. Sadly, most of the people we met weren't actually Cornish, which is one reason this talk also will not be awarded the point for originality. This point on the star is where we try to promote activities or destinations that help spread the load of tourism, preventing the negative aspects of over-tourism which some cities are now suffering from. We had some very interesting conversations about this with locals we met around Cornwall. However, none of them wanted to go on record about their views. One person telling us people get very angry about it. It seems that some people now consider Falmouth to be overrun by tourists and they say this has changed the city for the worse, cutting locals out of real estate and making what used to be small community get-togethers, such as the Oyster Festival, into pricey commercialised events. But others say if it wasn't for the tourists, locals wouldn't have jobs and couldn't afford the housing anyway. So I guess now is an important time for Cornwall to think about balancing the pros and cons of using tourism as an industry. Another opportunity sadly missed by the City Breaks app is the chance to promote underrepresented population groups or lesser known cultures. The question about Oggy was the only quiz question related to the Cornish language and it isn't even a Cornish language word, just slang. So this is a real shame and we can't award that point either. Finally, the last point on this star is for volunteer activities that tourists can take part in. The app was not designed for this and they don't offer any information in this area at all. Treasury. The next star is all about the money. The company that owns the app, Clucation Limited, is registered in England and Wales and seems to be run by a sole owner based in Oxford. So I guess you could say that profits are remaining in the UK but not necessarily going to the locals in the destinations that each of the tours take place in. There wasn't any information on their website or the company registry about any staff they employ but they are filing company reports regularly so presumably Presumably they're abiding by UK tax laws. Accessibility. The frequently asked questions for City Breaks states, 70% of the locations are set on well-maintained paths, pavements and roads. Other than Jacob's Ladder, we can confirm all the other locations we went to in Falmouth were accessible by wheelchairs. City Breaks UK also makes it clear that their Hidden Gems tours may be unsuitable for the visually impaired. But one thing we did find, that City Breaks hadn't included in the app was a beautifully sculptured handrail which leads into the disabled access entrance to the art gallery. It was designed in 1997 by Christopher Pollock, a partially sighted student at Falmouth College of Art. The railing incorporates sections of braille. We thought it was a fabulous experience for visitors to the gallery. 
The next two points on this star I'm letting go as not applicable in this case. The app doesn't touch on LGBTQ plus issues. Another missed opportunity to be honest as Falmouth has an excellent reputation in this area. Nor does it feature eating options. It's just not its purpose. The final point, social perspective, I am giving a white point. There was no social perspective presented because there was very little information presented at all. But this is definitely a place where the app could have done more. And that goes for the first point on the next star, relationships, which is all about how much fun we had. I'm giving it my dodgy transparent gold point here. Yes, we did have some fun. It was Falmouth that provided the fun, not necessarily the treasure hunt app. Daryl did enjoy watching the points add up, but it would have been much more enjoyable if you had to do a little bit more than just stand in a place to get a point. There really was very little interaction other than the quiz, and that wasn't as much fun as it could have been. The third point is also getting the transparent gold, because while the website is easy to use and the app is simple to download, it is also not what we would expect in terms of quality and content. Particularly on the quiz, the words were sometimes very hard to read. The text colour blended in with the background colour, so we will not be awarding the point for value for money. For £25, we expected a lot more information and interaction. Honestly, as I've said before, a simple Google search would have given us all these locations for free. So the final point, did it deliver what was expected or promised? Actually, no. The website made it sound much more exciting, and we were disappointed. The final star, sustainability. This star isn't going to look so healthy either. The website doesn't mention any commitment to sustainability goals, but to be fair, it's not an area they are necessarily impacting. But I do feel it's another area where they've missed some opportunities. Of course, as an online app, no resource wastage was created other than electricity usage. But what has not been mentioned by the app is that Falmouth is dedicated to improving its environmental impact and the city has a sustainability plan and a green tourism initiative. This includes providing recycling options for visitors and a great public transport system. The app does include the shop Unwrap as one of the points on the treasure hunt, which is a plastic free shop with a zero waste policy. So I can award a point for that, but I will make the last point transparent as the app is neither promoting nor discouraging high impact activities. So there you have it, our social tourism review of the City Breaks UK treasure hunt in Falmouth. Sadly this is one activity that isn't on our list of recommendations. Never mind, you win some, you lose some. And our next activity was definitely a win. We really enjoyed the medieval festival at Pendennis Castle, so we hope you will join us there. Until then, happy travels everyone!